What's up guys, Kyle here again, and today we're gonna check out this little guy, the Hotone Vulcan 5.0. Let's do it. Hope you guys are doing great out there today. We're doing a fun little video checking out the Hotone, Hot Tone, Hot One. Let's go with Hotone. Hotone Vulcan 5.0, which is a tiny little 20 watt amp that has a single 12AX7 preamp tube in it, I believe. Um, it's supposed to be modeled after the PV5150. I don't know that I hear that influence in there. It kind of just sounds like uh, your average run of the mill high gain tone. But essentially, this thing is made for, you know, practicing. Uh, in your bedroom through like a little 1x12 cab or something like that. It's just a nice little physical approximation of a higher dollar, uh, higher power tube amp. So this is the first time that I've really checked it out. So I'm still kind of learning it, but it's fairly simple. Across the front, you've got your bass, middle, treble. Then you've got gain and volume. We've got the volume almost all the way up. And it is not all that loud. So it doesn't have a ton of volume on tap but I've noticed that the mids and the treble kind of affect the volume significantly. So if you dial the mids and treble up, it'll definitely get louder, but it definitely gets a little bit harsh at the same time. Cool thing is this thing has an effects loop built into it. So if you wanted to put an EQ pedal in the loop of this thing to kind of further adjust the tones and tailor the EQ to your ear, which I think it would actually benefit from quite a bit because the EQ dials on the front are very limited, you could do that. You could also run effects in the effects loop because that's what you do with effects loop, right? Anyways, on top of that, it also has an auxiliary in and a headphone out. So you could use this thing for silent practice because it's a solid state power section. You don't have to have it hooked up to a cab and you could pump your favorite music or your band songs into this amp and then put some headphones on and jam along to it. So really nice feature considering that these things are just over a hundred bucks new. Not bad at all. You could do worse for $100. Uh, the only thing is you're obviously going to need a cab. I have no idea what the these things have like a little six inch speaker cab that they're supposed to be paired with. No idea what those sound like. As goofy as this is, I would never even waste my time with a cab like that. So we're running through the Mesa 4x12. So you're running through a big boy cab. I'm using a Gibson Les Paul Studio with the Voodoo Custom Pickups Oculus in it. So we're running it with some high quality stuff for sure, but uh, really kind of just messing around with it to see if we can get it to sound decent or not. So I had a boost on out front. It takes boost pretty damn well, actually. It, it benefits quite a bit from the boost, but let's do like I do with my normal amps and put everything at noon. We're gonna leave the gain down here around nine o'clock, leave the volume where it is and see how it sounds. Real quick, before we jump into the amp, if this is your guys' first time here at my channel, number one, I appreciate you stopping by. Number two, if you guys like content, like what you're about to see, which is me running through high gain amps, big and small, overdrive pedals and pickups, consider hitting the like button on your way out and subscribing to the channel. It really helps my channel grow and also I love building the community around the channel, so I'd be really happy to have you guys here for the next one. All right, so let's jump into this thing. All right, so a little muffled off the bat, let's turn that treble up, but it's got a decent amount of gain on tap. All right, so that kind of introduces some weird like harshness, solid state harshness up top, but you kind of need it higher in order to get it to sound alive. So let's dial some more mids in. All right, so not bad. Let's turn that gain up to about 11 o'clock and see how much saturation we get. All 
All right, so it definitely adds some saturation, but gets a little bit muddy. Let's turn the bass down a hair, turn the highs up a tad more and see how that sounds. Not bad, it just sounds kind of like it has a blanket over the speaker, which again, if you have an EQ in the loop, you could probably bump some of the higher frequencies up to remove that effect and make it sound a little bit more lively. So, doesn't sound bad. How's it sound if we scoop those mids out? So kind of muddy, uh, a little bit more like a rectifier, I would say. Let's turn the bass up. All right, so that sounds pretty poopy. Uh, the bass definitely gets farty once you turn it up and the amp with no mids sounds kind of dead. Let's pump those mids up to about seven. All right, so overall, it just is kind of muffled sounding. It's kind of farty and fat on the low end. Let's pump a boost through it and turn the gain down and see how much it benefits from that. Much better, although it does need some low end boost for sure. All right, so that is with the Deadwell Duality. Let's check out a regular old Tube Screamer. Okay, pretty much the same effect. It just suffers from a blanket over the speakers type effect. And it gets really unpleasant when you turn the highs up to try and remove it, so. Let's try that Mesa Grid Slammer real quick. All right, so overall, the amp definitely takes a boost well could significantly benefit from an EQ in the loop for sure. It was probably built with that smaller speaker in mind. That smaller speaker is probably going to push more treble frequencies and is not gonna need the highs boosted as much as a big four x 12 cabinet. So I'm guessing when you put it through the uh, little cabinet that's supposed to be paired with it, it probably doesn't sound quite so muffled and really you're using it more for its intended purposes. I don't think a lot of people are gonna buy an amp this size in order to run it through a four x 12 cab for home practice. So. I know this is a little bit silly. I'm more or less just having fun with it. So overall, I don't think it sounds bad. I think it would sound better through a smaller, dedicated cab for sure. But uh, you know, it doesn't sound like a 5150 to me really, but it still sounds cool. And it's still a usable high gain tone. You could probably record halfway decently with it if you wanted to. And then the practice aspect of the line in and the headphone out is a really nice touch. So cool amp for sure. I would buy it if it's on sale. Truthfully, I got this one for around 75 bucks. If you can find it for 75 bucks and throw the matching cab in for under hundred dollars as like a little cool novelty practice setup, why not? Otherwise I would say probably steer clear from it. But uh, anyways, I like doing stuff like this, messing around with smaller amps and everything. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And if you like this video and you want to see some really cool high gain amps, not that one, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel so you guys don't miss the next one that's coming up because I promise you it's going to be cool. Kyle here again. We'll see you guys next time.